uh, for our young people and for people in general. This is something that, um, that you have just been all over the place sharing, getting informed, and then helping to inform other people. And it's just awesome, awesome uh, in terms of what you've done. Your, your family probably would love to have more of you. <laughs> uh, but this is what you're about. This is what you love. This is, uh, it, it's just something that you cherish and that you're passionate about. And I thank you for that. Really? Please share with us, and I need I need you both to speak into the mic so that oh. uh, it can um, uh, be picked up, and uh, we can also hear you when it comes time for the uh, the video as well. Well, Glenn, let me first of all tell you you humble me with those words, and I think that they it's actually a definition of a glad glad fly. I've I've been flitting and flying, but but I, to, to where did I come from kind of thing? Let's put this in perspective because it is a long trajectory of time. I don't think many people realize in this county that many years ago, Congress awarded three states a grant to look at and, and develop programs for the growing number of uninsured children in the country, long before Obamacare, long before whatever we wanted to mm -hmm. do. And the three states were Maine, Michigan, and Florida. Well, Florida and Volusia County has a very, very important role in that because we were in, in Florida awarded uh, this this uh, national grant to look at ways of how can we reduce the growing number of uninsured children. Mm -hmm. So enter in um, what Healthy Kids became. Healthy Kids was a law passed by actually our very dear friend uh, uh, Sam Bell when he was in the legislature and he developed this this program. And that was the model that we built on. Mm -hmm. Now, that went for three years. And after the three-year grant from Congress ended, lo and behold, the national law called the Child Health Insurance Program was passed by a bipartisan group, Orrin Hatch and Senator Ted Kennedy. It's called CHIPA. It was called Actually, it was first called SCHIP. SCHIP, right. Yeah, and then it went up and <laughs> Now, the only reason I want to bring that up is that I do think there's a longevity here mm -hmm. that we have in our county that we can bring forward as we go through this very complicated, complex time of uncertainty and confusion by so many people. And to tell you the truth, it was just like that when we had our little teeny tiny healthy kids grant that had to become a statewide project mm -hmm. and people were saying, oh, we, you know, we don't need this and, and even people so why I want to preface it for that is because there are some good things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And if we can just look at those for a few minutes, and I actually wrote some of them down so we know some of the things that have happened under the beginning of the Affordable Care Act. They are happening, they are in place, and there's a great deal of information on hopefully.gov that we can go to and find out about. And I'm going to make my comments short for one reason. Uh, I think the centerpiece of right now of a lot of confusion is the advent of open enrollment on October 1st. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking the week before. It may not be the amount of chaos and confusion. <laughs> so, but but, but I, I do want to just have a, a little tiny, uh, if I could, did you want yes. to ask a question? Uh, no, please. Okay. Uh, the reason why we had to do something about the uninsured is we had the escalating cost of oh, yes. premiums. We had hospitals, we had debt going up. And that was impacting uh, the country and creating more of a deficit. A absolutely. Listen, somebody did just pull this out of a hat. And by the way, the first similar bill was in 1997 by a very beloved Republican by the name of, um, I guess I'm just, I'm just a second, I just wasn't uh, Oh, good. How did I ever do that? He was 1997 a Republican senator, mm -hmm. Bob Dole. Mm -hmm. just thought that, you know, Bob Dole put the same package out there and it was defeated. So it's been thought about before. How mm -hmm. do we reduce premiums? How do we, we change and escalate in growth of the care costs? Were terrible. So, anyway, good things have happened. In Florida, and why it's important, there's over 3 million people that are uninsured. I think we're even second in the nation, right, Joe? So mm -hmm. we're, way, yes. we're way up there. So it should mean a lot to people in Florida that we do something about this. So uh, what we have for the CHIP part in the child health, I mean, we brag about what we're doing for children. 
-hmm. And yet we're in the second highest percentage of children uninsured in the country and in Volusia County. In, uh, in the state, about 500,000 statewide mm -hmm. uninsured. Half of them would be eligible for our peer care program, but the other half would fall under the new expansion of what would be under the Affordable Care Act in the exchanges, and, and that is exactly where those kids will be picked up and be able to. The other thing that they did under the Affordable Care Act is children now, in, in, in healthy kids, there's different levels of enrollment at different, different ages and different incomes. Mm -hmm. This kind of level set, they used to call them step stair kids, because they had, you could have a family with four kids in three different programs. Mm -hmm. This Affordable Care Act, because of what they've done to blend the CHIP program with the exchanges where families can enroll children, they kind of level that playing field. Mm -hmm. So that is some other really good stuff that is going on. Uh, I'd like to go into the fact that women now can get preventive care services. Uh, no longer uh, does the insurance company drop people because they have pre-existing conditions. These are just some of the highlights. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have a long li list mm -hmm. of, that we can do about it. So I think having people go to healthcare uh, is, is a great, great resource. Here's one that's been around ever since we had Kick Care is a single application for the CHIP program and also for, for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. We've been asking for that for 15 years and uh, we have them the Affordable Care Act now. They are in Florida under the Agency of Health Care Administration. Is developing that. It should be up and going by December 1st. We had hoped in October, but these things take time. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a massive shift that's going on, but at least there is some positive things. Of the big problems for years and years. The medical loss ratio, and I wanted to just bring that up because there are people that are now getting rebates from their insurance companies because heretofore a lot of the managed care industry was only spending 60 to 70 percent of the premium of the dollars that were coming in on direct care. Mm -hmm. Now, with the 80 20 ratio, and that's for the large employer, and for the small employer, it's like 85% that they, they have to cover 85% of what is direct services and health care. That's true. Mm. And if they don't, they have to then yeah. provide I, I've got refunds, some of those, right, refunds right. to us. Uh, right, some, some of the money that came back, for instance, in the month of August, $183 million uh, in 2012 was rebated to people that had been paying we're not getting their full cost of the premium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's common sense. That's good. Mm -hmm. I don't figure what party you're with. Bottom line is where's your money going, and I want to get the best bang for my buck, especially if it's self mm here. -hmm. So, uh, those are just some of the highlights. And um, I know that uh, it's really important for Joyce to get going here, and I think that as we both talk, it would be good for me to be able to bring up some of the small business things that are yes. really, really important, and I've got some of that information that I've got to chart to look at, too. But um, I, I think right now there's an element of real confusion about what's going on with the navigators in open and mm -hmm. So we could segue choice into that a little bit. With your permission, yes. I think yes. in that way, then we can interject some of the parts that have to do with small business. And Joyce, <laughs> if you would share, as I've mentioned, uh, Joyce, uh, the program that she is with, uh, and it's the Northeast uh, <coughs> Health Planning Council, uh, they received a uh, grant, uh, grant dollars to actually help with the navigators. And if you could share with us um, just a tidbit bit of, about the uh, Health Plan Council and then get into the Navigator part of it because uh, there's a lot of confusion, especially in some of those states that are doing all that they can to impede the progress of people signing up. Uh, you know, what was required for the Navigators um, in, in certifying them? Uh, why is this the case? And, you know, we in part understand that. And uh, kind of where we stand now in terms of the availability and locations where people can go and all of that good <laughs> stuff that I know you're on top of, Joyce. So if you could share that with us, I would appreciate it. Okay. 
Um, the Health Planning Council of Northeast Florida has uh, been addressing the health care needs of individuals in Baker, Clay, Duval, Flagler, Nassau, St. John, and Volusia, Flagler, and Volusia County um, for the past um, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we have been a long-standing organization, and I think that there's confusion about who is the Health Planning Council because mm -hmm. they didn't really know what we did or, or um, where we came from, but we've actually been in the community for more than 40 years. Um, we received a grant, our, our grant was from the University of South Florida that um, applied to be the um, navigator's um, re resource for the federal government and they used health planning counselors throughout the state of Florida to um, uh, implement the program. We're going to do our seven county area um, here in Northeast Florida for the navigator programs and we um, have been hiring, we're hiring, um, have hired actually six uh, of the eight part-time positions. Um, I'm a full-time navigator and we have another individual in our Jacksonville office that's also a full-time navigator. So we're going to have actually ten navigators, boots on the ground, to assist people in enrolling in the uh, health insurance marketplace. I, I think what's really important for us to know is what the navigators are doing. And um, the navigators are there to help people who need assistance. And, and what I mean by that is, is there are, you can go up to healthcare.gov, um, get yourself an account, um, fill out an application, look at the plans, and pull the trigger. Make, make, yeah. make your choice right there. You, you don't need a navigator to do this for you. Um, and I think that that's the problem. People are saying, wow, we don't have enough navigators. Eight, eight or ten of these navigators in, mm -hmm. in the seven county area, we don't have enough. We do. Mm -hmm. Because people can do this on their own. Um, we also have certified assistance um, counselors that are going to be positioned at many of our organizations, um, not just um, in, in Blues County, but all, all seven counties. It's mostly going to be our um, hospitals, um, our FQHCs, which are the federally qualified health centers, also have certified application counselors. These are also individuals that will be able to assist people in enrolling in the marketplace. There's also your licensed insurance and a insurance agents and brokers that will be able to help individuals with in in enrolling in the marketplace. So there's a wide variety of folks that will be able to assist in this endeavor. It's, it's not just going to be navigators including the individual themselves that can walk on to www.healthcare.gov mm -hmm. and enroll in a plan that they think works best for their family. And uh, an another uh, thing that, that people may be exposed to, and that's people, that's uh, fraudulent activity on the parts of individuals who will start to then call mm -hmm. and say, you know, it's so difficult and we can help you and we just need you to give us your, your information and then we're going to charge you X, Y, Z. But what the navigators are doing and those other places that are, that are providing help, that is free, right? Right. Um, to, to go back, the navigators, um, the training that are for both the certified application counselors and the navigators. Now remember, your insurance agents and your, your brokers are licensed by the state, so yeah. they, they, you have that protection with them. And if you have an insurance agent that you like and you trust and you, you want to work with them, do that. Go through them. Um, the navigators and the certified application counselors have to go onto CMS the CMS website, which is the, uh, the Center for uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services, and there's a web-based training that you have to take. The navigators actually have to take 14 modules as a 20-hour course. Mm -hmm. They have to pass that course, and then in the state of Florida, there's an extra requirement where we have to register with the, um, the Division of um, the, the Department of Financial Services Division of Insurance. So we have an additional step that is there to protect consumers from fraudulent activities. So if you have individuals that are calling you and soliciting for your information, saying that they're a navigator, that's not what we're going to be doing. That's not how we're doing this program. We are not going door to door. We're not calling people up and soliciting information. This is going to, we're going to be at the libraries. In fact, we have a number of enrollment activities scheduled at our local libraries here in Volusia County. Um, we have them set up for the Fort Orange Library, Mace Florida Beach, Edgewater, we're working with Orman. Um, and those are, um, we're going to be using their um, computer labs 
to assist people. We're not going to be putting in the data. That's what's yeah. the difference between mm -hmm. us and, like, when you go to an eligibility worker at the hospital. We're going to be giving the consumer our computers so that they can log on to the website and put their information in all by themselves. We're not going to be handling any of their personal identifying information or their financial information. All of that is going to be input by the consumer. So all we're going to be helping them with is, let's say it's a person that's not um, savvy on the computer and doesn't know how to uh, even set up a, an account. Mm -hmm. We're going to help walk them through that process, doing screenshots mm -hmm. at the library, say, okay, you see this screen? Here, click here. That's one thing we may be helping them with. They may not know what a copay or a deductible or a premium is. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with folks that may not have ever had insurance yeah. before in their life. That's the and, and so, an so we're, we're going to be answering some of those questions for them. Mm -hmm. Even though they've wanted it, but just couldn't afford it. Right. And so, so I think that, that, that those are the, some of the things that we need to, to get out to folks to let them know. And that's really what the navigators are going to be doing. There's also folks that do not need to worry about enrolling into the marketplace. If they currently are employed and have employer-based insurance, they do not need to go into the marketplace and do anything. If they have Medicare, they do not need to go into the marketplace and purchase insurance. If they are and this will not change their no Medicare. Way. No, no. In no. fact, they will gain because in a lot of stuff, stuff that they may have had to pay copay on for preventive services, now they won't have to pay that anymore. And if I mean, they like their insurance, they can keep it. These right. are some of the myths that are yes, out there. Yes. If you're insured, you're fine. We're talking about people that are uninsured. And haven't been able to access it, and I think the educational piece that the navigators are doing are great. One of the other things that I think is a fallacy that, that we need to correct with the navigators is a lot of hype when this first started, saying, "Well, these people are, are not going to be uh, background checked," and all of these things that have been going on prior to this time mm -hmm. that happened anyway. All of these people, isn't this true, Joyce? Right. Any of the folks that are reaching out, whether it's the federal public health centers whether it's the work for navigators that are really educated people, this is a great service. Mm -hmm. That's a lifelong skill that we're, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not learning from the moment. So and they're basically lifelong. answering they, questions as they go along. They aren't, they aren't building a data bank. They're not collecting information. They're not, you know, well, getting all of your good stuff and all of that. Well, I think that the people that are that concerned about stolen identity, that's, that's different. You know, we're talking now that these navigators would somehow not be background checked. They could be felonies. I have heard so many of those rooms at first that, you know, who you know, these people are that being background checked and are they all right? And sure enough, they have to be certified and give us a rigorous training, as you mentioned, Joyce. Mm -hmm. So there's a little safety net there. Um, and we're not putting in the data. That, yeah. That's what I right, think people right. need to hear. Mm -hmm. We are not putting in the data. They are putting in their own data. They're going to set up an account. They're going to put in their own passwords. They're going to put in all their own information. That is not what the navigators, the, the, we're, we're going to be handing them our computers and saying, here you can use, oh, we're going to use a computer bank, like, like at the library. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to be handling any of their personally identifying information. The, the website that they're going to, the hub, it's called the data hub. Mm -hmm. This website is a secure website, and it will be taking the data and comparing it with the Social Security Administration website, the IRS website, and Homeland Security. And that's how it's going to, that's why you don't need your birth certificate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't need your W-2, you don't need any of this information. You need to it's know it to be able to put it in there, but you don't, you don't need to have that in your hand when you are and that and that is one of the questions. What do you need when you um, are sitting at the computer and you're getting ready to respond and to input information? So you don't need to have any of that. If you don't know your social security number, you should have something with that written down. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If you don't know, you know, some of the other things that are tied to that, then you need to just have that information. But if this this is about you. So you should know you and what you, you then put it in. And this person, the navigator, is there to assist you. You have questions right. about what it is. As you're saying, some of the things that uh, you don't, you know, there are people who don't think twice about if they have insurance, you know, um, 
uh, you know, some of the basic lingo that goes along with it. It's like, you know, I'm approaching Medicare age and, and, and I'm having, you know, signing up for some stuff with that. And there are questions I have on that and I'll be talking to people about that, even though, you know, I have a master's degree, et cetera. But when it comes to some key information that has to do with your health care and health care coverage, Many times we don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to mess up anything. So as a result, we need to have people that we can ask questions of. And it's great that uh, this is available for individuals so that you have a resource. Right. And, I, I, you know, insurance is, is the great thing about the ACA. And Linda talked a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the, the new things that happened. One of them was that the, the insurance companies had to provide the benefits and, and readable, understandable, mm -hmm. in English. So I think that that's going to be really helpful. But someone who has never had insurance before may not know that they that insurance companies have networks of providers. So one of the things that they may need to have with them or have knowledge of is who their providers are. So that when they're looking at an insurance plan, is that person or that doctor in my in in this network that I want to choose? And there's also a coverage for um, pharmacy. So it might be important for you to be able to look at the formularies that are posted on the website to determine whether or not the drugs that you're currently taking are on those formularies. Mm -hmm. So there may, that, that is where the navigator could be assisting in someone saying, well, I don't, I don't know, and the person may not make the decision at that point. Mm -hmm. They may decide to say, you know, this is, I'm going to go home and I, I need to get that information. And, and then actually go onto the website, they know what they're, their information is, and now they're, they're ready to, they're ready to so roll this yeah. out. But getting onto the website is, a, is another, you know, we've got all of these right. things, uh, all of these things that are percolating up, not percolating, that sort of boiling over, and um, I think the fact that we have what I would call pent-up demand, and, and the fact that when they went online, people were not being able to get through, and we were reading that in the paper, and we're getting that all over the place, and there's all this hype going on. Well, you can look at it this way. I don't think anybody anticipated that we were going to have the volume of calls and people trying to access. So I think Joyce, along the way, was saying, too, we need to patience right. and that people can do this, but that there's going to be some pushback and it takes time. And to tell you the truth, it was almost similar in that teeny tiny little program called Healthy Kids some 20 years ago. We kept saying, health insurance is coming for children, it's coming for children. And after the six months of getting the program up, bingo, they all came and they were all set because they hadn't had this kind of something called pent up demand. Mm -hmm. right. And I think on a macro level, what we've seen is, and those things will be worked out in time. Medicare, it's the same thing. You just mm -hmm. look at the history books. Social Security, all of these things take time, which is, of course, you don't plug a system in the wall, it takes some time. And then there's ways to be flexible and to work through it. So for anybody listening out there, and, and Joyce is right on with everything she said so eloquently, but I can just hear the voices in the back that aren't on the mic saying, well, yeah, well, we tried to get online, we couldn't get out, we're getting kicked off. And so there's some patience and there's some opportunities here, I think, with what Joyce is doing. Well, actually, those people, when you're in that way. The, the website, you can get onto the website. Yeah. The, there's a little bit of um, challenges with uh, completing an application. Yes. But the, there is wonderful information up on the website. Yeah. So if you do have questions, you can go up there and, and, and look at, at it's questions. It's the actual and enrollment into the program. It's, it's actually yeah. the setting up setting yeah. up an account, yeah. and, and, and that's where the, that's the challenge is right now. Yeah. And so what, what people need to know is that is that this website is going to be open for till March 31st for open enrollment to actually mm -hmm. um, apply and receive your health insurance. Um, if you apply today or apply three weeks from today, mm -hmm. your insurance is going to be effective January 1st. January 1 is when it starts. Absolutely. So you, the yeah. fact that you've signed up this week, you won't be getting insurance until January 1. That's yeah. right. So yeah. so there, there is, you have time. This mm -hmm. isn't like Black Friday. We're not going to run out of health insurance. We. Yeah. Nothing's the sale is going to last. It. it is a good thing if people want to just wait another week, two weeks, and and think about the types of coverage that they want to have, and and if they enroll and 
pay their premium by December 15th, their insurance will be at effective January the 1st. Now, I think, and one of the things I heard um, on Channel 13 <laughs> is the fact that, uh, that one reason a lot of people, they believe, are trying to enroll is that they know what's happening uh, in Washington, and they feel that if they don't sign up now that they're going to do away with the program and that they won't have a chance to get health care coverage. And people need to understand that, you know, this has already been passed by the Supreme Court and everything else. It is in place. It is in place, and it's there to stay. Yeah. Uh, a question that some might have, because you can go online and then there's a phone number that you can call. If you call the phone number, um, do they just provide the information and you still have to go online? The, the 800 number, you, you can actually process your, your application um, with the 800 number. Okay, so if someone is having an issue going online, we're not saying go there first. We're saying you have an issue online uh, and you can't process your application, then you can then go ahead and, and get on the phone and call the 800 number. And do you know that number? Yeah, it's 800-318-2596. But I, I do. No, no, 2596. 2596. Okay, 800-318-2596 is 800. There are challenges with that as well. And, yeah. and, and that's because a lot, because of the volume. Uh, absolutely. I mean, yes. whoever would have thought, and whoever would have thought, and that is what's happened, right. is that it, that's sort of the good news, bad news. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. The good news is we thought that people were not going to be aware that there has not been the good public relations to get it out there. Or as some legislators are saying, people don't want it. Well, <laughs> and, and and case in point for the state of Florida, and, and this is not to be critical, but it is a, a reality and observation that we've been leading the pushback mm -hmm. for this Affordable Care Act since the get-go in the state of Florida with their lawsuit that we've been uh, struggling to be able to, and that's with all the wonderful advocacy work in different organizations, to be able to educate people when you're just hitting the wall mm -hmm. over and over and over again, including a last day of the session uh, when the bill was passed in the Senate Bill 1842. It was like a stealth bomb. And nobody really knew it was out there. And what was it doing? Well, it, it just, it, eliminated the Department of Insurance to the Office of Insurance Commissioner from oversight over the insurance rates that were escalating. Mm -hmm. So Florida is part of the law that they have to monitor insurance. It has to monitor the rates so they stay within a certain level and question those insurance companies. By the way, they're playing along in a pretty good game. They have like 102 different policies that are floating around the state right now, mm -hmm. 11 major companies, but what they were able to do in this law is say, Department of Insurance in Florida, you uh, are not allowed to monitor the rates and the rate increases, and, and that is not a consumer-friendly right. thing to do to your own constituents that elected you in office. And in all due respect, that is something that has to be dealt with in this next session because mm -hmm. it has been very confusing. Mm -hmm. And I'm very pleased that Jeff Atwater, who is our current commissioner, I see he is doing a webinar with the agency that is doing the outreach visits covering kids and families. Mm -hmm. He has joined, and I think that that is just a little positive spin that mm -hmm. our readers get to understand and our listeners. There are some incremental good things beginning to happen. And but it was we're way behind and that's why I think a lot of the in Florida are gonna need some extra uh, assistance through the navigators. And and Blue Cross not Blue Cross Blue Shield, they're now called blues. If you look they have marketplaces set up every place. They had but they opened up storefront places before October first for people to come in and learn about. So we have a multi-approach, I think, effort in Florida, but the bottom line is for the folks in the streets, it's got to be the navigators and the CACs and our hospitals. The hospitals that are, I know they're not certified yet, are they for, um, but most of them are probably better than the water. They had to apply to be yeah. an organization that would um, have offer um, and have a certified application counselors or CACs yeah. if mm -hmm. they're calling them. And um, 
that, that again is a consumer protection to make sure that somebody's not saying that, oh, I'm a, I'm a certified application counselor, I'm a navigator, and they're not attached to anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do know that Halifax okay, is, um, yeah, that they're, 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 I, I believe that their, their target date is to be ready by October 15th. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so for uh, people who uh, have already called, and uh, there are people who have thousands and thousands of people who have been able to either make the application online or the phone calls, and uh, they are then, they've made their selection in terms of the metal, uh, the, the bronze or the gold or the... It's the, it, it's the metal plans. And yeah. And bronze is your, is, you know, just like in the Olympics, it's your, it's your third place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you got your silver and your gold. Wow. But this has got a platinum plan. Yeah. So your bronze plan is a 60-40, and then it goes up. In order to qualify for the tax subsidies, you have to pick a silver plan or better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are between 100 and 400 percent of poverty, you will get tax subsidies for a silver plan or better. And each of the, of the counties um, are, are going to have different um, options available to them in terms of what the plans are. Do we know what dollar so figure it, yeah, that is? I've got them right here for you. <laughs> yeah. In Florida, the, the bronze, and, and by the way, for a single person, at 11500 it goes up to 46000 for a single. The bronze in Florida is uh, $304 uh, for the premiums at, versus the U.S., which is 310 And the silver is $257 uh, for Florida and $249 uh, for the U.S. And, of course, the gold was the Cadillac. And it is true that the, the best buy in, for your buck is going into the silver, into the silver. But look at this is after the tax credits for a single person, 27 years old, making twenty-five thousand dollars. The bronze comes down to one hundred and sixty-seven dollars, which is, is a quite a drop. And then for Florida, down to one hundred and thirteen. And the silver, starting at one ninety-nine, two hundred one ninety-nine, goes down to one forty-five. So those are significant, per yeah, per month, but that is significant, and one of the things they, they did to entice the young adults that tend to feel invisible, they're, yeah. they're not going to get sick, but to get them involved, their essential health benefits is very appealing, but they're also allowed to get catastrophic coverage. 30 and under. Yeah, 30 and under to get yeah. catastrophic coverage, and, and that reminds me of yet another very good thing that's happened. In this community, particularly, the fact that the now, if your child is on your insurance, you can get coverage under your parent to age 26. So you can stay on your parents' plan. You know how after you graduate mm -hmm. from high school, you went to college, and put think of your kid is dropped off with your insurance. Now families can keep their adult child as an on to at least age 26. And they don't have to live at home. And they don't have to live at home. They mm. can be married. Right. They can be married. <laughs> well, this community has had a long history and concern with foster children aging out. Mm -hmm. um, this year in the Senate, Senator Dieter increased the age from what was 18 being dropped off to now age 21 in the state being able to be in foster care. But there was a young man that was working in the Senate when he saw that they elevated the age to age 26 for you being on the parents or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, by golly, they put an amendment on that says, he said, I was a foster kid. I wouldn't be able to get it. Mm -hmm. So they wrote in the law before it passed that, yes, foster children can now be on Medicaid to age 26, mm -hmm. just as a child who's in a parent biological mm -hmm. parents. That was one of those little secret things that slipped in that was up to a point of joy. I mean, this is great. Now we have to get that word out of the mm -hmm. So working with people like Alan Abramowitz, with Guardian at Leiden, and our uh, child welfare system, um, I hopefully wouldn't be able to work on getting that word out. Because that, that's an important piece, too, for, yeah. for enrollment and getting folks on. But I just wanted to mention, mention that. Yes. Uh, and we want to make sure that because they're saying that there were some people who signed up uh, for affordable the Affordable Care Act, that's the ACA, 
uh, that uh, were actually Medicare, uh, thought they were applying for Medicare. Uh, the truth is that you can't be Medicare eligible or on Medicare and apply for, they would not allow that to go through because you can't do both, right? You have to give up one. You, you can. I mean, but you'd have to give up your Medicare. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're right. It, it, any, any, if you're receiving benefits through another government-funded program, mm -hmm. like an entitlement program, like Medicare, Medicaid, VA, uh, Tricare is the other one. Um, though you have to give them up in order to go onto the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So m most of those benefits, those coverages, are are equal to or better than what is available on the on the marketplace. So. Yeah, I would not. I would not encourage folks to to give up. They would have to rescind their their eligibility, their Medicare. I, I would not encourage them mm -hmm. to do that because they won't. And they also then won't qualify for the tax credits. Right. Yeah, see. So yeah. so so they don't get any benefit to doing mm -hmm. that. So th those folks that are already on those government funded plans do not. You don't have to do anything. You don't. You don't have to worry about signing up for the Medicare for or for the marketplace. And, and let me just take a, a station identify, identification break here. You're listening to Truth with Gwen Asma Edwards, and this is WLE, uh, BIG, 1380 AM on your radio dial in Ormond Beach, Florida. And my guest and I, are Linda Merrill, child advocate, and Joyce Case, who's uh, with Health Planning Council, uh, Northeast Florida Health Planning Council, who's also working with the navigators for the Affordable Care Act, uh, the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. I always th think it's important to say those first two pieces, patient mm -hmm. protection. Uh, affectionately, or not, maybe not so uh, referred to as Obamacare. Uh, but we're talking about, of course, affordable, uh, the affordable care that is now available to a lot of individuals. And, um, and I've I, and I know, Linda, you have, I'm sure Joyce as well, we've been talking for years about the need for affordable care for the working poor. Uh, and, uh, and this is the piece that allows those individuals who, for the most part, you know, they're not poor enough, they're not rich enough, uh, they kind of fall in the middle and, and many times have kind of slid through uh, the gap in terms of not being able to uh, get health care, and now, now this is their opportunity. Uh, and for our seniors, they've got Medicare. Uh, for our, um, our more indigent or those who are in need, um, who are poor, we have uh, Medicaid. Uh, we have other types of programs that are out there that are privately funded uh, for a lot of people who can't afford it, who are part of an employer group and the like. Uh, but for these individuals who may be working, and a lot of them are working, but they don't earn enough to be able to afford, uh, you know, to pay for health care. And uh, many times, these are the people that we say are making that choice between being able to feed my family and pay for health care. Um, or they're, they're making the, the choice that, uh, okay, if I need health care, I just go to the emergency room. Um, that is not... Even though you can still, you will still be able to go to the emergency room, but at a certain point, there's a penalty that is applied if you do not have health care. There are people who have an issue with that, but I was listening to the president uh, speak the other day, and what he said was, now, does it really make sense if, if we've got a lot of people who are, who are joining in who, who have health care, that we uh, taxpayers continue to pay the high cost of, of health care uh, for them when all they had to do was go ahead and pay what the little that they needed to pay so that they could be covered. Um, you've talked about the unsta uh, unsustainability of the high cost of health care that's been going on for some right. time. Uh, it, it really does not make a lot of sense for someone to not be insured when they could be insured. Well, it's pay me now or pay me later. Yeah, pay me yeah. now or pay me later. Because see, here's what's going to happen. You know, you, you, you can purchase health insurance, and, and the 10 essential elements have so many, you know, for kids, it includes vision and dental care. Yeah. It, 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 it has rehabilitative, it has pharmacy, it has doctor visit, ER visit. It, it's amazing what's available on these plans. 
So if you choose not to have it, there's a there's a thing called what was being referred to as the individual mandate, um, but it's it, they're calling it the individual responsibility requirement. Mm -hmm. The individual responsibility requirement. I've heard it on other programs where they're saying, oh, it's just ninety five dollars. What's the deal? It's just ninety five dollars. No, no, no. What it is is it's ninety five dollars per a, no per adult in the house. Yeah. Half of that for each child in the house mm -hmm. that remain uninsured, yeah. or one percent of your annual salary, whichever is higher. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it, it, so 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 so, and then it goes up. Yeah, that's just for that's for for two, 2014. So in 2015, it goes up to three hundred and ninety-five dollars per adult in the house, and half of that for each children, or two percent of your annual income. And then it goes up to that in 2016 to $695 per adult in the house half of that for each child, or 2.5% of your annual income, whichever is higher. So you pay the tax man and, mm -hmm. get, and get nothing, mm -hmm. or buy health insurance. At those rates that we were talking about. Yes. That, that it's a totally affordable. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, 56% of the folks that would be in that group that you're talking about would be eligible for the subsidized piece to reduce their premiums. That's why we were talking about the premiums and those bronze and the silver mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we're talking about. That, so if you put that in the mix, you see that the bigger one is like, hey, I don't want that sticker shock. I, I'll go ahead and pay and get, get some good health care. And I think a lot of the, the programs where people were buying health insurance that were getting the bare bones program. Mm -hmm. It is what she is talking about as the essential health benefit packages. That are required the to be a part the of The benchmark right. can't be stripped again. Mm -hmm. So those are safeguards for people that are terrific. And then what does this all do? You bundle it together? It reduces our premiums. We have healthier people. And I'm going back to what the Health Planning Council is about. It's about healthy people and healthy communities. And these, this is the path for us to get there. We have a healthier society, and we have individuals who are productive, and, and to me that means they're going to go to work. Absolutely. And, and the employer is going to benefit. And our economy gets better. Absolutely. I mean, well, from a lot of your folks that are also, you know, like you said, people that are, that are don't have insurance, right. I mean, how many times have they had to take a day off because they had, they had to go to the eat, they got sick, and then mm -hmm. they got more sick. They, or their children, they had to right. their children to the doctor or to the ER because they couldn't afford to take them to the doctor to prevent the illness from becoming mm -hmm. worse. And so they, they're, they're out of pocket cost to them from not being able to go on the job is, is so much higher than this monthly premium will be. It, it will save them money in the long run. Prevention saves us so much money in our profit services. We, and, and, and that's what's under the Affordable Care Act. You know, I didn't realize this. Last year when I went and got my mammogram, you know, I was like, they, they, they didn't have my copay. And I, I was like, this is great. I, don't I, mean, yeah, so, I know. So, when so, I did it, I, so, I said, yeah. oh, I don't have to pay. Oh, great. This but, is awesome. Well, so some of those things for the, for the Affordable Care Act were implemented early, and that included copays for prevention services. Exactly. Like your colonoscopy, your, your, your prevention mammograms. All those copays went away, so that fifty dollar gig that you yeah. used to get at the, at the at getting the mammogram, and, you know, was great. And prevention is a part of this, and mental health services free that's prevention a part of that. Is and and there's a piece right. even as you go further into it for training for more professionals, right. more healthcare professionals, and, that, that's and like that's, yes, that's all of that progress. is just well, and, and and so and even you know. Um, People are starting to see that even if they're in a private program, that their their costs are going down. Mm -hmm. You know what they're paying for their insurance. They are realizing the benefits of this, and I can tell you because prevention is a is a part of a, a, a piece of that as well. That uh, in some places they're actually letting people go to gyms, you know, and they're covering the cost of it. I know through Florida Healthcare, they're covering the cost of, of me and it's anybody else who's a member to go to uh, to a gym. Uh, so, and, and you know, for a lot of our young people, a lot of them go to a gym or whatever. Uh, check, that may be a part of something. Who knows? Yeah, because yeah. it's prevention. You know, I just have to, here we are, three, <laughs> three women uh, talking about healthcare. And, and as you were talking, Joyce, it, it reminded me of the fact that you know that women's premiums were higher than men's men. across the board, and that is now gone. That is now history. And why? Because women were 
previous as if they have pre existing conditions. And I think that might have been about having babies. Yes, yes. yes. And uh -huh. so, but I mean, that, that all of a sudden there's so many little things that are percolating up that show, first of all, that it's equity and it's good health. Leveling on the playing field. Play. Yeah, and, and uh, to me, that's, that was something that was a major piece. But, you know, we've left out a huge piece of the puzzle in our conversation, and it begs perhaps another show. Um, and that is the Medicaid expansion debate that's going on in the mm -hmm. state. Uh, when the bill was passed, it was going to be automatic that folks would be covered at 100% of poverty and below. And that is the very poorest of poor. And what has happened because Florida has chosen not to expand Medicaid, we came very close last year with an alternative model. Uh, uh, Senator Joe Negron uh, was promoting it, a, a strong, good Republican. I'm only going to mention that because it became a nonpartisan issue. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, the House did not adopt it. And it would have been an alternative with all the benefits that they needed but allowing them to do a small, small copay that would make them keep their dignity and mm -hmm. also participate in their health, which you were just saying. Because Florida is not, there's only 36 states that have, have taken this up and that are allowing them to do the Medicaid expansion, we are losing $51 million that could be going to people that are uninsured at 100% and below. We're talking about people at 100% and above. Right. But because Florida didn't move forward with that, and we were hoping that um, there would be another bill filed this year that's similar, because we are walking away. That money goes to another state. Mm -hmm. Those are, and, and it's we, just us getting back money that we've already sent to, to the federal and, and level. Some yeah. of our uh, legislators, all of whom I respect greatly, um, we need to educate them this year that those are our tax dollars. It is not somebody else's money. And not only that, it's the hospitals are all on board, associated industries. And you've got the chambers, the state chamber, that's behind this as well, because that's money that they that will be covering some of their workers. And these are single people, primarily men, that cannot get Medicaid. And, and it's, I think it's stunning people to think that we have the poorest of poor right now, probably going into a home shelter, cannot get health care coverage. Where do they go? The hospital. Hospitals, this is a big, big issue with the Florida Hospital Association, and certainly our own system here with the hospitals, and they will tell you, and um, we, we need to get that done. That, that was removed, unfortunately, it became not mandatory, but it became a choice for states. Um, and I just wanted to slip that in, because mm -hmm. that is a population that we are going to be paying for. And, uh, yes. You know, one of the other areas that, that people harp on uh, has to do with the subsidies. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, and all of us who've had jobs, who hold jobs, we know that there are dollars that are taken out of our paychecks to pay for future health care costs and our mm -hmm. Medicare, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have a say. You can't say, I don't want that money taken out because it's something that government does in order to fund uh, your Medicare, but the bottom line is that even with those dollars that come out, they do not fully cover everything that an individual ends up using in terms of health care uh, with Medicare. Uh, so in a manner of speaking, uh, when they talk about, oh, we don't want to subsidize this or subsidize that, there is subsidizing going on with health care. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to Medicare, when it comes to some of these other programs that are made available too, um, the bottom line is that people are paying funds, paying some money to purchase the health care, right? right? But you know, I think that uh, this we could always do a mini summit, <laughs> and I'm, I'm visualizing organizing something in this community quickly. I know many, many other parts of the state are doing that in the Florida Chain, which is an organization I'm with, and some other groups. But, you know, the competitive market for insurance is going to have a tremendous impact on this. Mm -hmm. When I said there's 102 plans that meet the essential health benefits being in the market right now, by having more people insured, having more choices, 
the premiums are going down. Yes. The cost, what Absolutely. is about all that? It's about reducing the cost of runaway health care mm -hmm. costs. Mm -hmm. And so, Which in turn reduces, but, I will yeah. repeat again, the yeah. deficit. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and so we're getting into the big pond right now, but in the big pond, you get more fish swimming, you get more people covered. Absolutely. Your rates come down, and I think that's kind of a guiding principle about what this is all about. But because there's so much information, so much misinformation, and so many myths, we need to hang on to some of the good work like the in the boots on the ground, mm -hmm. the, the navigators, the navigators. The people educating and being able to help people. And with Joyce's background in the health field, which is just sterling, people like this can make such a difference. Um, and, and it will go on. It's, it's work that has to be done. It really does. But premium rates will come down. The insurance companies love it. And, and but seriously, the blues, way before we got done with this, with the first ones out of the shop, they went in there and setting up storefronts mm -hmm. to let people know that, that, that was coming. And when we say the insurance companies love it, because I had someone send me something say, oh yeah, you know, they love it because they're getting over blah, blah, blah. No, the oh, reason yeah. they are for it, and the reason, one reason, good reason, I believe, in hospitals too, is because they will have more people who will be paying into the of system. Course. And um, Halifax, one of our hospitals, always talks about the number of indigents that they end up having to provide service to. Yeah, your public and, hospital. Yes, and in no way is it covered, the full cost of it covered. If these individuals had health care and they went into the hospitals or whatever, they would not have to pick up the cost, pick up the tab, which means taxpayers picking up the tab. Right. And then because of our, we have wonderful hospitals in this community and all over the state, and I think for our friends in the hospital, that, that is true. What has happened to them, which is a double whammy, is an anticipation of some of these things being in place. Expansion of Medicaid. There's an stuff. automatic reduction in the disproportionate share monies that they would get, which is to offset the, the underinsured and the people that they, they could usually shift those dollars to be able mm -hmm. to take care of those that are uninsured that have to present themselves to the hospital. The hospitals are bound to have to pay them. And, and the thing that we have here is the public hospital really, it's incumbent on them that they have to take care of. They can't turn it They can't turn it right. so, so in the meantime, here the hospitals are faced with you know, having to have reduced dollars, right, Joyce? And so that, that is the cost shifting us with Medicare rates and everything. Well, they, they're, they're certified application counselors are I going to be there. there. And um, I think some of the folks that are currently qualifying for their charity dollars will be sure. um, steered towards purchasing. Right. The so, so if someone goes into the emergency room and they don't have health care, they're going to be talking with them and asking them yeah. some key questions and if and then providing them with information that will allow them to be able to go ahead and benefit. Right, exactly. So, And, and, and ultimately that's benefits our community yes. because if you get people off of the, the charity roles, and have their own private insurance, then it's 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 less people that we have to uh, mm -hmm. pay for as a taxpayer. Absolutely. Except for those folks that are under 100% of poverty, the poorest of the poor, like $9,000 a year, up to maybe 11000 <coughs> for two or three, <coughs> they're the ones without the Medicaid excuse me, expansion that, that are going to still go to the hospital. Well, the good thing is that we also have some wonderful safety <coughs> net programs available mm -hmm. to people in our community that they can go to. So this, that, that, that's a, a godsend, really, that we have those facilities mm -hmm. still available. They can, you know, the Ryan White program is still available. Um, you know, uh, the volunteers, the, yeah, the, the, the Jesus Clinic. We, we have a number mm -hmm. of, of safety nets that, that the individuals that um, do not qualify for the marketplace and are, are below 100% of poverty and did not, do not qualify for Medicaid, we have them. And then the good thing is, is that the folks that are, between, that are using the safety net programs because they can't afford insurance mm -hmm. are going to be able to have insurance right, right. to go to a private doctor. So we're going to so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna ease up some of the mm -hmm. pressure the that's on our safety net yeah, yeah, so so well, this, The thing with the safety net, and this is the old RN community, because it was really a long time ago, uh -huh. your current, is the fact that, you know, 
the thing with some of those clinics and having worked in some of them is that um, that, that when you have somebody who needs some surgery or you need something done that's something more serious mm -hmm. that you might not have. Now I do understand that we, we have some very benevolent physicians and good physicians in this community that will oftentimes pick up and do some of these things on their own. But for the most part, when you, you're working in a clinic before, um, you don't have a referral uh, process to, mm -hmm. to take care of what you find, but right. you need some help. With. So it, it'll yeah, and and you know, we'll will the other fallacy is that um, people are saying that this um, Affordable Care Act was set up to ensure everybody, and that was never felt to be the case. There will still be some people who uh, don't qualify, who aren't able to get it, but the greater majority of people will. Right, and it gets more people. Uh, on board and uh, makes affordable care available to them. The other part of that, I think, is that as we find out then, as this works its way through, and we find out the, those who are not then covered, then they can, you know, look to see what they can do to help those individuals as well. Because I think, uh, as, as your organization says, uh, we're talking about building a healthy America a healthy America is a productive America, it's a, a more joyful or happy America, it's an America where we are helping those individuals who are in need, whether it be uh, mental issues or physical health issues or, or whatever those um, care issues are, that uh, there's a service, there's a program that's available that will help them through it and hopefully what we will end up seeing is less of those uh, serious and traumatic and uh, awful things that are going on in our country because mm -hmm. people are, are not availing themselves or able to avail themselves of, of much needed help. Um, so if, if you would share, uh, Joyce, those dates that are so key that people need to know and the uh, where they need to go in order to apply the, again, the 800 number and the website number. Okay. Um, the dates. The important date, we just had one, October the 1st, the open of the health insurance marketplace. And thousands and thousands of people. Gazillions of yes. people have gone to that. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, yeah. and, and the website the floodgates. is the www.healthcare.gov. And if you enroll and pick a plan by December 15th, you will have coverage another date by January the 1st. The last date to potentially enroll in a health care plan is March 31st. And if you don't enroll by March 31st, the um, health insurance marketplace enrollment closes but reopens again next October. So it's really important that if you want health insurance, you go to www.healthcare.gov. It's a little slow right now. Um, uh, you can get great information and maybe not be able to easily apply it just yet, do it in a week or so, um, and, and, and just inform yourself about what, what's available. The 800 number is 1-800-318-2596, that's the um, health insurance marketplace with, um, I'm sorry, toll-free number that you mm -hmm. can call. They also have the website available in Spanish. And then they also have available uh, over 150 uh, languages on them, so you need to ask wow. them a toll-free number. Right. So, you know, they're, 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 this mm -hmm. is really a, a mm -hmm. landmark yeah. uh, situation that has happened here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we glanced up, raised over just a little bit was the, the mental health and substance yes. abuse treatment. Yes. I, I have That's to say that the, the lifetime maximums are gone. And, and, and so the devastation yeah. of mental yeah. illness in, in this country mm -hmm. are, are largely in part by our deep institutionalizing of, of facilities back in the early 80s. Right. And, and, the, and the lifetime masses that we imposed on, on people that had mental illness, they never had parity with um, blood and bones types of services, yeah. and now we got it. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, is that me most mental illnesses are treatable. Mm -hmm. And people can get the, best, the care that they've never been able to receive and become productive, tax-paying citizens. Uh -huh. right. Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be great? We could really use another whole hour. <laughs> and yes. It begs, well, I think we need to compartmentalize, like even getting into this 
small business piece that we, we, I skipped over that because yes. that, that's a whole there's, show. There's but there's right, some right. really important things, and a lot of small businesses are signing up. I mean, we've got the data that shows that yeah, there's people that fix there's they know. tax incentives for nonprofits. There is the absolutely. Shop. Oh yes. wow! Yes, that's a whole other program. Uh -huh. the shop, you can get. It's called. It stands for the Small so Business Health oh, Options right. Program, and it's for um, employers. And it oh, it, it has wonderful. been delayed somewhat to November first. Right. But people can get information about the shop on the www.healthcare.gov and there's a part for yes. employers. There's a button for employers. Mm -hmm. And and even if the application process isn't open yet, you can um, get great information about what you need to do and mm -hmm. what the tax incentives are for you as an employer. Right, right. This, I, I saw yeah. something today where uh, Disney it's actually Absolutely. Walmart uh, and Disney. A Walmart and Disney. Yeah, oh, yeah. One, I'm yeah. glad to see that Walmart's getting on yeah. board. I, uh, they're shocked. actually taking their part time, making them full time, so that yeah. uh, uh, that's awesome. I mean, that is a awesome. Lot of, I saw that today too, and there's there's really some good stuff mm -hmm. happening. That that's why I think the floodgates open. Yeah, uh, and, and it's going to wash away some of the fear. Oh, absolutely. And the fear, fear uh, mongering, and all that kind of stuff was there. The hate mongering, all that stuff that it was to prevent people from going ahead and signing up. Because as someone said, once they sign up, hey, they understand now that there is it's a great program and it is going to meet some unmet needs that they have in terms of health care. Uh, once they get a taste of it, they'll understand, and the world will get around. You know all that stuff you heard? That's not true. It really is a good thing. It's a good thing for individuals, for families, and for the United States of America. And it's not free. I think that that's the important message. Yeah. It's, it's not, not free. It's not universal. Individuals totally. have to pay for this coverage. Mm -hmm. It's not free. Yes. The yeah. thing is that they exactly. now can pay, it, it is now affordable, right. affordable. They can now afford to purchase that health yeah. coverage. Right. And, and there, there will be bumps in the road. Oh, for it's any new legislation, nothing. especially of this magnitude and it's that's so be, close to so us. So that's why the administration has already been flexible and adaptive. Like when the large corporations were really having problems. Mm -hmm. And of course we've had some pushback with the small employers as well until they work out some things. But yet yeah, you can go on and, and get into the market. But, but what you can't, you have to draw a line. You can't remove the subsidies because then you're impinging upon Absolutely. individuals really actually being able to afford and being, you know, willing to even to sign up in the life. Well, there are just some things. And continual delays for what? So that you can again try to kill it? Well, I mean... No, I think, I think with a large, you know, a, we're primarily the nation is a small business nation mm -hmm. in the country. Oh, yes. It's 96 the percent of it. Florida, are. it's 80 something percent. I've got some out here. But, but nonetheless, it's the large business. There was some complexity, and they mm -hmm. realized they couldn't do that. And so there would be that, but yet the framework and the basic core is, is there and alive. And some stuff's been going on. Mm -hmm. right. And so small businesses, even though there's a piece that has been delayed, they're still going in and signing up and having their people uh, uh, sign up and, 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 and check it out, too. That's what's so key and important, that people check it out. Check it out. Right. And even if you don't qualify for the subsidies, the insurance is meant to be affordable. Yes. Yeah. So you can go up there That's and, and right. look at the plans, and if you're upon 400 percent of poverty, you just won't qualify for the tax subsidies, but you may find a plan up there that's equal to or better than what you currently have at a reduced rate. Yes. Right. And, and what's wrong with that? Yes, and we're seeing, what, 300 or less? Well, right. That's for those numbers, and I, I'll get that. And to I tell you, you I pay, I pay over, I pay between five and six hundred myself, and that's in group yeah. insurance. Uh, and there are people I've heard about, especially those who have uh, those uh, illnesses that you know insurance usually has not wanted to cover. Um, they've been paying thousands of dollars a month. I mean, uh, right. we're talking about people who whose income has kept them from being able to infuse money into the market 
right. into the economy because it's all going to health care. Now those numbers I gave you were Florida specific because each state is going to vary and, mm -hmm. and ours are a little bit still high compared to other states. I think Arizona would right behind Arizona. And that's but in the three hundred. Yeah, that, that, range. that was the three hundred and four dollars for for Florida. But remember, I told you that about fifty six percent of those would be eligible for well, because subsidy. Because so they go down. The cost would go down, right? In the meantime, the big engine for the insurance industry is going to help produce this more and more because you get a hundred and ten plans already viable. Competition. The competition and private company competition. So that kind of fits into what everybody wants in the economy is to be able to have it be both, both public and private. Imagine yeah. all of those dollars that have been going to to high cost health care now being available to flood into the, the economy and help businesses and help individuals who now more people can be hired, you know, think of think of how great this is going to be for America as opposed to something that I read where that someone said this is the worst legislation that's ever come through the pike. I'm sure they say that about Social Security and, and Medicare and, and all the other stuff too, but in actuality this is something Affordable Care, the Affordable Care Act, that legislation, the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, is actually going to help the economy reduce the deficit, infuse more dollars, make more dollars available that would have been going to health care, and people are going to buy insurance that is now affordable. And it doesn't get much simpler than that. You know, I would like to recommend that if folks have a no insurance agent, no broker, you know, um, use, you know, I'm from Texas, <laughs> so um, one of the things that we were learned in Texas was you bought your city first, you bought Texas second, you bought USA third, and then you did everything else you didn't mm -hmm. buy. But what we want to do is help our insurance brokers as well. They have mm -hmm. the ability to help you with a plan that's on the marketplace. Use your local insurance mm -hmm. agents to purchase the plans. That puts food, they'll be on commission, mm -hmm. you, you know, but that puts food on their table, mm. and that keeps that money in our community, you see? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's a great thing for us to do. So the navigators can help people, but if you if you have an insurance agent that's, you know, in your church, or, or if you, you play racquetball, what do people play racquetball still? Yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, <laughs> um, this <laughs> <laughs> That's so 80s. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm so much younger. Right. <laughs> if, if you if you have somebody that you know and you trust, use them. Use them to to help them out mm -hmm. and purchase your insurance through them. And and you don't have to have a navigator. Only if you absolutely need the assistance do you have to have a navigator. Mm -hmm. That's your friendly and, and that's a perfect piece. I, as you were talking, there was a piece I got yesterday in the mail. Fifteen minutes about the media that we should ignore, and, and one of them, I think, is, is really great here, and it goes to our, some of our earlier comments, the Affordable Care Act is not socialized medicine or government takeover. And what we're talking about here is really the privatization in many ways, using an employer-based program, mm -hmm. we're using, so it is going to be something that's going to be public and private, and I think it's really, we need to get rid of some of these indexes. It's, mm -hmm. it's what's disturbing people and, and with the navigators, and I, I, I want to read all the wonderful stuff we said. I'm not going to read, but some of this are because but they're out there. We need to dispel those and get back to the show. Is a truth show. Yes, yes. And and if you want to know more information, you know you can go to the library and get on a computer. www.healthcare.gov has information, you can look at the information, you can read it, it will, and it does have information that dispels a lot of the myths that are out there, a lot of the uh, untruths that are out there, and you can do that at your own leisure. Uh, the bottom line is that this is a good thing for you, it's a good thing for your family, it's a good thing for your community. And if you already have health care, uh, you can check it out, but you know, again, we have Medicare that's in place for our seniors, uh, this will not uh, change that, it would just improve it, what's available. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, health care for a lot of our, our poor individuals uh, who are on Medicaid and the like, and since the state didn't expand it, that left some people out, but uh, we've got those kind of covered in many ways, but it's a lot of our working poor, and these are people who are working who just cannot afford it, but you know, 
when they go to the emergency room, when they, when they go and they get health care uh, and they're not able to afford it or whatever else, we are the ones, everyone else are the ones who pick that up. Uh, this is something that will help the deficit, it will help the economy, it will help uh, infuse more dollars uh, that we're going to help care back into the economy, and it is a win-win for everybody. No matter how much people want to fight it, it's a win-win for everyone. Again, go to healthcare.gov, uh, call the 800 number, 1-800-318-2596. Um, uh, please, 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 even if you have some and, and you have relatives who don't, have them to check it out, or you check it out for them and, and, and refer them. Uh, closing comments, guys. This is just, I know we've just tipped the, uh, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg that we've covered, but it's just so key and so important that, uh, that in, in this information get out to, uh, to the public. So closing 30-second um, comments. Well, I guess with the children, I'll go first, and that is what came to my mind as you were talking is, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and system reform takes time, and do we need it? Absolutely. Well, we have three and a half million people in the state of Florida that can't afford health insurance going to the ER. It, it makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes good sense. And Joyce, for the navigators? The navigators, will, I, I want to also include in the navigators that the Epilepsy Foundation got navigator money yep. and so oh, did Mental, Mental Health America. So the Mental Health Association also has navigators. So wonderful. if you need a navigator, then use a navigator. We will have them available in the communities. We're going to have some enrollment fairs. Um, we're partnering with Walgreens and the libraries. And, mm -hmm. and we will be announcing those uh, throughout the community. Um, there's also the CACs, the two, uh, Certified Application Counselors, that will be available at, at uh, Halifax Hospital and um, the Federal Qualified Health Centers out in the D-Land. So um, we're going to be there to help people. If you can do it on your own, go for it. If you can use an insurance agent, use, use your insurance agent. But look at the marketplace and get enrolled. Absolutely. And for those who are of uh, uh, Hispanic origin uh, or nationality, you that there will be programs that will be out there to provide you with assistance as well through navigators in Espanol. That, yes, in Espanol. and uh, outreach services for you as well. So um, you will not be overlooked. Don't allow yourself to be overlooked. Um, check it out, the Patient Protection Patient. Affordable Care Act. It is there for you and it helps you, helps your community, helps your family, helps the United States of America. It's good for us. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you to our guests again, Joyce uh, Case uh, with the Northeast Florida uh, Health Planning Council, who is coordinating the, um, the navigators for the Affordable Care Act, and Linda Merrill, our child advocate. And uh, thank you guys for listening to Truth. Uh, with Gwen Asme Edwards. Again, go to the website www.gwen-truth.com. I will have um, this um, video up for you to uh, see as well and to hear more. And uh, again, go to the website www.healthcare.gov so you can get more information on the Affordable Care Act. And be sure to go to our website www.gwen-truth.com. Until next time, be informed, be empowered, stand tall for that which is right and truthful. Again, this is Truth with Gwen Asme Edwards, and like you, like our guest, uh, Joyce Case and Linda Merrill, we're all standing. You be blessed and have a great week. Oh. Gwen Asma Edwards, exclusively every Thursday night on WELE. Yeah,